It's super windy outside. <laughs> oh, I love Death Valley. I love Death Valley. It's like, hi, we're going to be beautiful and nice crisp morning, but then we're going to have winds like a hurricane. Oh, whoa, it's sunny. I'm like in the pool. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenny, and today I give you the quirky history of Death Valley Junction. There used to be a swimming pool in Death Valley Junction. Two, actually, over the course of the last hundred years. Isn't that insane? A swimming pool. I've been watching the sunrise. Good morning, sunshine. Welcome. I like to talk about history, hiking, and small town living. And today, we're going to talk history. We just are just like a postmodern encyclopedia here. It's exciting, but is it really that exciting? I don't know. We will find out. Come along. I love the junction. <laughs> Let's get out of this car. Well, I brought a trash bag. Um, the last time I came out and uh, we cleaned up the cemetery, we actually, Bobby and I, spent a couple hours cleaning the desert to try to mix it up but I did bring a trash bag which I'm really glad of because wow there's all kinds of trash that's blown into this swimming pool here in Death Valley. Actually it's, it's nice and quiet inside the swimming pool uh, which would make sense because it's going to protect me. So this is a great place to talk about the swimming pool. So the swimming pool itself was um, part of the original hotel build in the early 1920s, in 1924. And it was part of the property of the hotel. The town itself in the late 1800s, early 1900s was actually very populated, had a couple hundred people living in the town. So when the hotel opened up, which was a hotel for the investors, it wasn't a public hotel at first, it was a private hotel for the Pacific Borax people and then had the dormitories so there was all kinds of people who lived in town and then there's this hotel and with the fancy swimming pool a good friend of my friend Bobby uh, Duffy because I do never remember his last name sorry Duffy I remember you and you make an amazing pineapple upside down cake it was so good um, anyways I digress I digress let me go back Duffy was born in Evelyn but then lived in Death Valley Junction when he was a kid and attended school here and uh, performed in the Cork Hill Hall, which is now known as the Amargosa Opera House. That's the, where Marta showed up later and took over. So Duffy made an arrangement at nine years old with the caretaker of the hotel or the managers of the hotel that if he were to come every week and drain this entire pool and then subsequently scrub the walls of the pool, and refill it, he and his friend had access to swim in the pool when it wasn't open, when like when there was no hotel guests and there wasn't people of importance inside the pool. I had the amazing fortune to be here for uh, these really incredible Death Valley History Weekend that Bobby Fabian put on for the, the junction. And Duffy told this story, and, and, and uh, as I'll, I'll scope back and we'll look at the pool, I'm thinking, wow, like that's amazing. At nine years old, that you're just going to do this. But I am really, really glad that I brought a trash bag. I almost um, might need to bring a bigger one. Hi, I'm in the swimming pool. <laughs> that's the diving board right there. This is the one thing that I still am on the edge about. I know somewhere in the courtyard they attempted to put a pool in. Um, but I'm not sure if the pool ever was actually completely functional or if it was just something that they had wanted to do. There's a lot of chunks of history that are only verbal and also um, they're scattered when it comes to the junction. Some of it I've just been told uh, orally through people who actually lived here. Like the miner who lived here in the 70s and was in one of the Lila C houses when it caught on fire and he used to remember he used to hear Marta's toes because when you're ballet and you do point it makes a lot of noise uh, but I have some stories from him that maybe I'll share at a later date but let's check out the swimming pool and clean this place up kind of not sure what that is I'm gonna canvas something or other 
it really is rather peaceful inside the pool and there's concrete that comes down an old-fashioned style and this it comes down like this but I, re I wonder if the concrete will be would be under all this you know hundred years of, of desert or like the concrete must go all the way down um, and <laughs> this is a lot of it a lot of work for a nine-year-old to empty and sweep out and then fill back up and it's just like the land of the water geez has everybody expected water would just be See, things, things like that I'm, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to take, after I document, I'm going to get the water bottles and the that stuff out of here, because that's just gross. Every time I come to the junction, I take a bag of trash from the desert. And look at that. Okay, now let's clean up. <laughs> it's so windy. I go back into the pool. <laughs> okay, I got a whole bag of trash of just plastic bottles and weird stuff i just i left in all i left anything that looked old which is you know that's the whole point it's a historic place but we don't need trash floating around now that we cleaned up the swimming pool let's go clean up where you can camp and take you to the roger house mr roger's house it's a beautiful day in the junction it's a beautiful day at the junction would you be my neighbor would you be my neighbor Where's the rest of you? Hi, Mama. Hi. Where is everybody? Where is everyone? Huh? There she goes. She's by herself, though. I wonder where the rest of the herd is. Well, it's been a couple years, and they don't leave for the Chicago Valley at the same time as they used to. I found so much more stuff out of the swimming pool on the way to the trash can. This video might just turn straight into let's clean up Death Valley Junction. It's really, really windy, but I did walk past the trees where people camp and um, I just, it's just so sad. I think I'm going to go to the car, get a snack, and then we'll do some cleanup. Now that we stopped at the swimming pool, then before we spend some time picking up a bunch of trash. In the 1920s, the census of Death Valley Junction shows very few people owning property. Pacific Borax Company, of course, and Mr. and Mrs. Tubbs, or Mr. Tubbs, who I'm going on record that Mr. Tubbs should have been the entrepreneur of the decade at some point at Death Valley Junction. He, Mr. and Mrs. Tubbs deserved their own video. That man was just Mr. I'm gonna make it happen. Including, he is the man who decided that the children of Death Valley Junction needed to have a school teacher. Although, I don't think she was expecting to spend the night in the brothel when she got here. But that's another story for another day. If you're interested about the Tubbses, <laughs> You can leave a comment below. Other person besides Mr. Tubbs and the Pacific Borax Company that owned property at Death Valley Junction was Mr. Rogers, which I always found really cute because I'm like, hey, we got Mr. Rogers here. He's my neighbor. And Mr. Rogers' property was measured from the train station railroad ties or something along those lines. Currently, as I'm filming, my friend Joe is looking for the documentation that he has that describes where you measure from. But because of the fact that a lot of the railroad stuff is gone, like there's the station, there's a little bit of the station and there's some of the, little bit of the tracks, but what they're talking about in 1920 
It just is not there. I believe this is Mr. Rogers' store, but we can talk a little bit more when we get inside the house. But let's go find Mr. Rogers' house. So that's what's remaining of the train station. And those ties or those poles in the ground, I'm not sure if that has to do with the train or has something to do with later in life because there's been a hundred years and all kinds of stuff happening here. But from the direction of what seems to be the census, we would have uh, this little remaining structure that's tucked in the salt cedars here on the property. Could be what I believe is Mr. Rogers' house. It seems a little bit small to be a hotel. But, and then in the distance is the very old pump house. And you know, today's National Take a Hike Day so I might just take a hike out there to the pump house. I've never been to the pump house. We can go together. So let's go check out Mr. Rogers' house. This is my favorite building that's not part of the junction. No, I take that back. This isn't my favorite building. I love every building equally. Although there's some buildings on the fenced off side of where the mill and the mines are that are just kind of wonky. But uh, I, I absolutely love the masonry of this brickwork. Um, unfortunately, it has been tagged numerous times, but thankfully it looks like we were able to power wash off the tagging on the outside because this is a historical building. slightly shocked when you go inside but it is quiet in here and so you can see the inside of the place is is still unfortunately been tagged um, because there are, I honestly think that because there's no documentation on the outside that this is an historic building and this is kind of important that we don't graffiti it but you know at least they're doing something about trying to keep graffiti out. And like, here's Rick Blocker. Okay, Rick Blocker. Soap Lake, Washington. And Infowars. Jeez. I like to stop dreaming. Start doing. Find the missing. Every time somebody smiles, I wake up. Look at that view. Look at that. Can you imagine working in the store and you just happen to look out and you're always looking at the shadow mountains? That is beautiful. Let's see what this window looks out. That's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Now, there is a lot of trash in here also. I see underwear, I see beer bottles, pizza. Somebody ripped the sink and did pull that off the wall. Here's somebody's bunch of food. It's a shoe. This building is, uh, people stop at this building all the time, all day, every day. It's a great, it's a great little building to take some, some, some fun little, like, ooh, abandoned. I took, you know, abandoned pictures. Uh, please don't 
graffiti our buildings at the junction <laughs> that would be awesome <laughs> as much as I love graffiti I, I would be more than happy not to graffiti the, the buildings at the junction and I think maybe we should take a walk out to the pump house which is covered in graffiti and that's on BLM land that's actually on BLM land and I'm sure although it's a vintage pump house is probably rather historic um, I might argue that that might be a better place that you have to go do yourself. Like, please stay away from Mr. Rogers' house. In three and a half years, I've never noticed the fact that that was actually a concrete pad when you walked in. But I know the rest was a hardwood floor and it even looks like it might have been red at some point. Um, but, uh, yes, Mr. Rogers' house. Hi, how are you? <laughs> it's still windy and cold. I love my Tuchetti Fresh. Yeah. Um, anyways, I've had some snacks and we 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 went out to Mr. Rogers' house in the swimming pool. Now I'm going to just take some time and clean up and then we'll talk about how to go camping here if you want to dry camp. Uh, because there is a there is a way and there's space for a few people each evening that dry can dry camp here at the junction. I just, uh, I just absolutely know that they're going to enjoy it much better if we just take a minute and clean it up. Just real quick, I like did not even notice when I first was looking at all the bottles that people like straight up like put the bottles in the tree. There's a trash can. Less than a hundred feet from here. So I don't understand. That's okay. It's gonna look nice when we're done. It's gonna look nice. Don't poke my eye out. Okay, seriously, this is like at least 40 pounds worth of trash. It's definitely over 25 pounds. I had to use two hands to sling it over my back and Look at creative putting in the trash can here. Ugh. Hear that? Now across the street is where you can dry camp. You need to turn in. Uh, you go to the front desk over here and check in. You leave a small donation and you're allowed to camp overnight. There is no services. You must turn your generator off by 8 p.m. Uh, but you'll be here bright and early and ready for a tour. And you're super close to Death Valley and you still have some cell service. So I hope you had a good afternoon. Be grateful, make good choices in your own adventures, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Come along, follow me for more adventures in history and hiking. Whoa! <laughs> and learning how to walk and film at the same time. Smash that like button.